Uh, I'm here today to, on behalf of really all the hospitals in San Diego County to just tell you how serious the situation really is. Uh, as you're probably aware, up in LA County, uh, they have already run out of ICU beds, and frankly, we're not all that far from it. Last night, as I was preparing my notes, um, I actually received a note uh, from one of our emergency physicians. And I think, you know, being on the front lines, this message may be more important coming from him than coming from me. Uh, he was sending this to one of his uh, bosses. He said, I wanted to pass along two things, maybe to pass up the food chain. I have been increasingly disheartened this last week when seeing our fellow San Diegans completely disregarding stay-at-home orders. Malls, stores, and restaurants are packed. Yes, people are wearing masks, but more needs to be done. I feel like even my educated neighbors have no idea what's, what it's like and what is, what's going on in our hospital, and I'm sure that all of San Diego hospitals. I feel like most people don't understand that not only are we out of ICU and critical care beds, but we are running out of some equipment as well. I don't think people realize that soon we could be in a situation like Italy or New York City when all we will be able to offer a critically ill patient will be a nasal cannula oxygen, basically causing numerous individuals that could be saved to needlessly die. I wonder if, this, if getting this message out to the public via the news and newspaper would help the public see the gravity of our situation. I feel we are on the precipice of having mass death on our hands and the same nightmares seen in New York uh, and in San, it could be here in San Diego. I was writing to see if Scripps Corporate can get the message out. I would hope this would help make San Diego realize how severe the situation is and maybe would help change behavior and save lives. My response to him was that it appears at this point the believers believe and we fear that many others just don't seem to be heeding the message. And that's why all the hospitals in San Diego County through the Hospital Association uh, issued a press release this, this week um, out of our concern for the situation here in San Diego. Uh, as you noted from the slides earlier, we're already surging, or we're still surging from Thanksgiving as evidence in our healthcare system of a 22% positive test rate just this last week. And we all know that when you have 22 people, 22% of the people getting tested, there's going to be a percentage of those individuals in the hospitals within two to three weeks. Uh, and of course, that's Thanksgiving. We still have Christmas and New Year's right ahead of us. As President-elect Biden stated yes yesterday, he said that the darkest days of COVID are not behind us, they're still ahead of us. And that's what we fear here in San Diego. Let me just give you some history. On July 10th, that was roughly July 10th or 11th, San Diego County had 411 COVID cases in our hospitals. And we felt like we were a little bit out of control back then with 411 cases. Uh, and that, by the way, that included many that were transferred here from Imperial County. Those were just not San Diego County residents. Uh, as of th today, just a few minutes ago, we have 1,492 COVID patients in our hospitals. That's more than three times the amount of cases that we had back in July. Um, and right now, uh, in San Diego County, we have 24 staffed ICU beds available. That's out of about 670 ICU beds. 24 left today. Now, patients are coming in and out every day. Those numbers change. But that indicates to me, and I think that others in the healthcare system, that we have a little bit of a dilemma on our hands. Now, let me show you a couple of slides to show you what our predictions are. Uh, UCSD has done some uh, analysis with their data scientists. Sharp has done the same thing, and Scripps has done the same thing. And these are numbers that we actually put together over the last 24 hours uh, in collaboration with San Diego County, who shared a lot of data with us as well. So the first slide here is our COVID-19 hospital census prediction. So this is just COVID um, uh, uh, patients. Uh, so, so right now we have um, 1,347. We believe we will peak on January 10th at 1,827 patients. Now there's a best case in that red uh, shaded area. The best case would be 1,300 and the worst case up to 2,200 uh, COVID cases. That's, by the way, a 28% increase between now and January uh, 10th. The next slide um, is the projected COVID-19, just the ICU census. Uh, right now, it's at 336, but we believe it will peak on January 11th at 483 patients. Best case, 344. Worst case, 584. And currently, 67% of all of our ICU beds are being held by COVID patients. The next slide. 
Uh, this is the med surge. These are the patients that can be in a little bit of a step down, not in the intensive care unit. Uh, our projections is that we will peak on January 9th at 1,387 patients, best case 988, worst case 1,675 patients. Next slide is the total hospital census, and this is when the whole hospital gets overwhelmed. Uh, right now we have 4,439 patients, 30 percent of those are COVID patients. Our projections are that by January 10th we will have 5,133 patients, 36 uh, percent of those will be COVID. Best case, 4,608. Worst case, 5,514. Next slide is the ICU census. Remember I told you we have about 657 staffed beds right now. Uh, right now, on, on yesterday, there were 582 patients. 58% of those were COVID patients. Our predictions are on January 12th, we will peak with 726 patients, 67% of those COVID. Um, and that will be 108% uh, of our capacity at that point in time. Best case, 597 patients, worst case, 827 cases. And then our med surge census, uh, as of, um, uh, we think we'll, we'll peak on January 9th at 3,950 patients, best case, 3,551, worst case, 4,238. And that'll be about 35% COVID patients. And the last slide is just the assumptions we used in uh, putting these numbers together. So the reality is um, we're facing a significant situation here with our capacity. Um, and it's made worse uh, because back in, in uh, summer, the spring and summer, um, it was a regional situation, not a national situation. So back then, we could get traveling nurses. We could get registry nurses. We could hire more nurses locally. Uh, today, this is a national situation, and we cannot recruit uh, travelers. We cannot recruit um, registry nurses. Um, and unfortunately, a number of our health care providers are also getting sick. Uh, and they, just like everybody else, uh, had holidays and are out in the community with this high community spread. And uh, we have a significant number of our health care workers that are testing positive every week. And that reduces the amount of staff that we have. So it's not a bed issue that we have. It's a staff issue that's the most significant issue we have. So what's our response? Well, first of all, all your hospitals in this community are working together. I've never seen such great collaboration between the hospitals, the healthcare association, the county of San Diego. Um, we have stopped elective surgeries, and we're only doing really time critical cases. These are cases that cannot be postponed. Um, emergency surgeries, cancer surgeries, a variety of surgeries that you can't postpone. But everything that we could postpone, we've postponed. We are using surge plans to increase our capacity. So we're actually, uh, we have opened our third COVID unit up at Scripps Encinitas. Uh, and today at Scripps Encinitas alone, they were at 183% of their ICU capacity, surging out well beyond their traditional ICU. Uh, we are using engineers to expand negative pressure capacity so that we can admit more patients in a secure environment. We're using team nursing. So normally we would operate under staffing uh, ratios but the state of California has given us waivers because we wouldn't be able to even admit patients if we didn't have the waivers. And we're using a concept called team nursing to expand the use of nurses and support the nurses in their care. We're load balancing. We're continually moving, transferring patients from one location to another. So just last night, we transferred eight patients from Chula Vista, Scripps Chula Vista, to hospitals in the north that had some bed capacity. So we're maximizing the use of the beds in the community. We are recruiting. Uh, but few resources are, are available. Uh, we are buying more equipment. We are buying more ventilators. We are buying more supplies. We're buying more PPE. And the County of San Diego has been great in terms of supporting us as well. And really, the best news we've had in a long time, we are vaccinating our staff. And literally, we are having doctors and nurses crying when they get their vaccine. So we know how important that is. And if we can provide for their health, they'll be able to provide health to you later on. And lastly, we are working on our crisis care protocols. And this is the care we would take care of patients when we actually run out of capacity completely and we're unable to take care of patients in the ICU where they belong or in med surge where they belong. There's a whole process that uh, was developed by the state of California. Uh, our healthcare system, the other healthcare systems have drilled in this just in case it was necessary to implement and we're ready to implement that if absolutely necessary. So our ask is very simple. Uh, given what we're seeing, maybe it's a little bit too late but we're asking you over the holidays to certainly enjoy the holidays. 
Um, but stay within your immediate family for the holidays. Uh, most of the cases we are seeing now have, relate to Thanksgiving gatherings and gatherings together, unfortunately, in stores and businesses uh, where people got together too closely. Um, wear a mask. Wear at least a three-ply cloth mask or better. Distance yourself more than six feet or even further if you're going to remove your mask to eat or drink. Celebrate outside if you can and certainly wash your hands. And if you travel, because we know that people are going to travel no matter what we say, drive if you can, wear masks, quarantine yourself when you return home if you can for seven to ten days. And that way, even if you're infected, perhaps you will not infect others in the community or in your own family. So we do have a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, while it's a little bit grim, the message I have to share, we are in the holidays. We hope for the best. We have a vaccine now. And we're running right now a marathon. And we're at the point where you're at the 20-mile mark and we're hitting the wall. And people have pandemic fatigue. Um, they're tired of all of this. I can tell you the healthcare workers are tired about this. But we got six miles to go. We got this vaccine that we're going to be giving our community this next year. And the there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Let's not give up now. Let's be focused on what we need to take care of our community and to take care of our healthcare delivery system. Thank you very much. Have a happy holiday.